So the title of my inquiry project was the Multifaceted Languages of Students Incorporating Dialect and Code Meshing into the Classroom. And this is kind of a complicated title, but I'll go further into detail and unpack this. So a little background information. In the classroom, the environment is extremely important to student learning. So that brings us to our next point. What are dialect, code switching, and code meshing? So dialect is the type of language from a particular region or social group. Code switching is going back and forth between those languages. And code meshing is when you incorporate elements of those languages into whatever language you're speaking. So for example, in code meshing, you might say, or an English language learner might borrow a word from their native language and say, where can I find my bibliothèque? So that's French for the library. Where can I find the library? They use that French word and they mix it into the English. And they may also borrow a grammatical structure from their home language. So in English, they might say, I'm going for you to send a message. And in French, that makes sense um, if you translate it directly. Uh, je vais vous envoyer un message. So that's directly into English, I am you to, I am going you to send a message, but in French it makes sense because that's just the way you say it. So code switching and code meshing are used to communicate in our lives, um, often unconsciously, and they appear in classrooms really frequently as a method for explaining things in our own words, and that's just something students do. So I chose to explore this topic because when teachers give students a place for the language in the classroom, it communicates to the students that what they have to say is valuable. So when a student comes in and they use their dialect, their home language, or their code switching, then they're communicating an idea in the way that they're most comfortable. And as a teacher, it's an important it's important not to attack that because when a student comes into your classroom and you say, oh, you need to leave that language at the door, it's basically asking them to split their identity into two from what happens in the classroom and what happens outside of the classroom. And students, it's, it's for students, it's impossible to separate themselves from their perspective of their life experiences. So what happens in a student's life affects everything that they do. So if that language is part of their life, then that language is part of the way they think, they communicate, the way they express themselves. And you can't just expect them to turn that off when they come to the classroom. So I included this reference right here from Godly et al. And this really spoke to me. Um, so the title of it was Pre-Service English Language Arts Teachers Development of Critical Language Awareness for Teaching. And I'm going to go a little more into detail on this later, but um, just to kind of bring it into um, the forefront here for a moment, it inspired me to kind of explore this topic more because in this study, pre-service English language arts teachers, they knew how dialect and code switching and all that was important in the classroom. However, they didn't know how to express that to their students. So this was a study of all white pre-service teachers, meaning they are in the classroom, but they haven't gotten their teaching license yet. They're teacher candidates. So these white teachers understand that dialect and code switching is important and is important to students um, expressing themselves, but they don't know how to talk to students about the power structures. So um, in my inquiry, I found a really great example of why code switching is necessary, and I wanted to include this um, passage from Terry Myers, who's a professor of education and literacy, and it's about an experience she had with bilingual, a bilingual Portuguese teacher who believed that Cape Verdean Creole was not actually a language, and despite how many students in their classroom who needed bilingual teachers that were fluent in that particular language, 
So reflecting on the experience, Maya wrote, who could believe that teachers really do tell children that they have no language? Some teachers really do. They tell this to Haitian children, to Cape Verdean children, and to African American children who speak Ebonics. Ebonics has been referred to as sloppy speech, bad English, broken English, poor English, ungrammatical English. Sometimes teachers just say, we don't talk that way in here, or you can talk like that at home if you want to. And these are all ways of delivering the same message. What you really speak is not a language. So while that bilingual teacher's reaction to Kate Verdi and Creole may appear to some as more obviously bad, it's still sort of debated as to whether or not foreign language programs should discourage native languages in a second language classroom. And various educators do have different stances on code switching and the use of native language in the classroom, but their negative positions create an environment in which students' backgrounds and individual needs are not taken into consideration. And on the right here of my slide, I actually do have a picture of um, the island of Cape Verde. And you can see just from this picture, it's a beautiful place. It's lush. There's different people who live there. And why would we tell someone that their language is not valid or that they can't speak that way? I feel like this Portuguese teacher who... If, if they had these same students come to the classroom, but the students were speaking something like French or Spanish or another language that wasn't necessarily Cape Verde, then they might not have actually, the teacher might not have actually reacted that way because it's likened to abonics. And when we use the word abonics, um, I'm actually going to refer to it as AAVE, which stands for African American Vernacular English. It's seen as slang or street language, but um, African American vernacular English actually is governed by more rules than standard American English. So what is critical language awareness? Critical language awareness is basically, like I mentioned before in the study on pre-service teachers, knowing um, about dialects and how code switching is sort of a valid thing and that it's important to welcome the students' home languages into their classroom because it sends the message to students that their ideas are important. So it is really important for teachers, um, especially white teachers, to understand that they are going to have to talk about uncomfortable topics such as race and the structures of power that govern standard American English. And the thing of that is that students need to hear these things and they need to understand that it's okay to talk about something that makes them uncomfortable because it'll push their perspective and help them to be a better person and understand each other better and listen to each other's ideas. So by coming into the classroom and saying, hey, I know this is going to be uncomfortable, but we need to respect each other and have this conversation and have this discussion civilly, students are opened up to the idea that they can ask questions and have a discussion on something that's maybe not what they're used to. So it is important to discuss the structure of power around language. Um, in my own experience, I was an intern at the Department of Education in Washington, D.C., and one of the projects I worked on was a school climate survey, and they were web-based surveys for students, parents, and teachers, and they discussed their opinions on how safe and comfortable the school environment was. So during that experience, we talked about the concept of trust. And while you can't necessarily measure trust, you can measure factors in the classroom that impact student learning. and impact how comfortable a student is in the classroom and being able to express their ideas and kind of talk candidly were a part of that aspect of school climate. So telling a student that they can, in essence, talk in the classroom and they can express their ideas lets them know that their ideas are important and it's important for teachers not to shoot down a student just because of the way they talk because it tells a student, your idea is not important and I don't want to listen to you. So that was the focus of my inquiry and why it's important for students to be allowed to use their dialect and code switch in the classroom.